الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واذكروا نعمة الله عليكم إذ كنتم أعداء فألف بين قلوبكم فأصبحتم بنعمته إخوانا وكنتم على شفا حفرة من النار فأنقذكم منها كذلك يبين الله لكم آياته لعلكم تهتدون صدق الله العظيم قال عليه الصلاة والسلام ليس الشديد بالسرعة إنما الشديد الذي يملك نفسه عند الغضب أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام So this is a different type of talk This is a discussion And this is a discussion in which I'm hoping that those of you that are tuned in now Those of you that are listening will be able to share with me ideas as I keep my WhatsApp open. And one of the brothers just messaged me, does 36 years of age count as youth? Yes, it definitely does. Especially for someone, I'm not referring to this brother now, but for anybody who may possibly have seen that life, who's been there on the streets, who knows what it's all about, they may prior to now been, have been affiliated with people that are part of these gangs that we have in our city. Anybody, anybody who has any suggestions, perhaps answers, perhaps solutions, perhaps ideas as to how we can try to solve this problem. Because it's a very great problem. And it's, remember, this isn't something, number one, let me keep the battery for this thing on so it doesn't keep turning off and I have to keep, so, Number one, this isn't a problem that we, the Muslims alone, oh yes, a very special brother has just tuned in. He was actually very well aware. He gave me a very good synopsis. It's taking place right now. The brother who's asking, this is taking place right now in Abu Bakr Masjid. Nevertheless, so he was very well aware of all the event that just took place, the tragic, the sad event that took place in Lee side, just maybe 20 minutes away from here, Abu Bakr Masjid, closer to the Thorncliffe Park, the Don Mills and Eglinton, the Flemington area. So anybody who has any suggestions, this isn't something that we're struggling with. Remember this. This isn't a Muslim problem. This isn't a problem of people that belong to this pocket in the city or this pocket in the city or a little east from here, maybe six, seven minutes east, that pocket. In, no, no, this isn't a, something that we of this community, of this masjid, of this organization are struggling with. This is something that I asked the brothers for ideas, and one of the brothers mentions nikah. We're not talking about nikah, my dear respected brother. I'm not going to take any names, but basically I want ideas, I want solutions, I want answers. Now what is it that I'm referring to? If somebody is asking me whether or not I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about nikah, we're not talking about nikah. Hold on, hold on. We're not talking about nikah. What we're talking about right now is gangs. Gangs that our Muslim youth are part of. We're talking about guns. We're talking about illegal use of guns in this city by those that are still minors at times. People who haven't even reached the age of 16 pull the trigger, become a means of killing someone dead, and that's it. Now we're talking about violence. We're talking about the streets. We're talking about all these other problems that bring about so much heat here in our city. And I'm sure... These are problems that are faced by many others of many other cities as well. So, the government is struggling with this. Here, in Canada, I'm going to refer to Canada and of course the city of Toronto alone. We know exactly what's happening south of the border, nevertheless. So, Canada, the issue with Canada, with youth I see in Canada is that they don't know how serious are the activities that they are involved in. One of the brothers has just messaged. They don't know how serious it is, the activities, the engagement, being a part of a gang, being a part of this group or that group, having a turf war, having a rift, having a rival with somebody else. You know, I don't want to go into details because that's not the right thing for me to be doing, especially from this platform. It's sad that we might just believe that something that had started only a few months ago may go on for years 
and it might be a cause of taking the lives of many other Muslim youngsters. I'm talking 15 year olds, 16 year olds, 19 year olds, 21 years old, 21 year olds. The government is struggling with this. It's a fact. The police are struggling with this. It's a fact. Communities are struggling with this as well. It's a fact. Families of these youngsters, of the youth that are involved in these gangs are struggling with this. And more than anybody else, many a times, the youth themselves are struggling with this. Whether they're part of a gang, whether they're part of some other, unfortunately, circle of friends or posse or clique or whatever term is used in this day and age, I'm not exactly sure. But they're struggling with this. They're in too deep and they don't know how to depart. They don't know how to make their way out. Or those that are easily influenced and impacted by the same others. And you know what's sad? Because the movies that people watch and the music that they listen to and all of this, oh, all of this media, this mass media, plays such a great role in these young, innocent lives. Why I say innocent? Sometimes these same kids that were either killed, you know, it's just strange that I use the word kid. It's not out of disrespect. It's not derogatory. They were minors. Many of them were under the age of 18. They legal, legally weren't classified as adults. They were students in our own masajid. And don't dare, please, please, don't you dare point a finger at the imams or at the masajid or at the organization. Because I made it clear, we're looking for a comprehensive solution to this problem. I am not, tonight, I only, I, sorry, I only began with the verse of the Holy Quran in the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Hadith, because this is our custom. This is what we do. This is what we learn from our scholars of the past too. But this is a discussion and I'm looking for answers. I, not just me, me, this masjid, this organization, me, these imams, the imams of the GTA, the imams of Scarborough, every time somebody else pulls the trigger and somebody dies or somebody shot or somebody, we're fr I, I, I don't know how long I took. The moment this incident took place in Leaside just two, three days ago, Oh, I was panicking and I'm worried. And this happens every time with me. To me, I, I, I don't know. I consider it m m m a part of me is gone. I didn't know who this individual was. I probably have never seen him in my life. But I feel like, why did another one slip away? And I blame myself. And I start to investigate, like, who is he and why and what is it? And, the, and I start to educate myself. And I, Wallah and Aldeem, I don't need to tell you this. But I take this very, very serious. And I really hope, I know I'm going to sound like Malcolm X for a second, but I actually hope that one day, I, inshallah, this is my dream. Just, you know, this is sometimes me just thinking a little too far or whatever, whatever it may be. I hope that one day, insha'Allah, one day, insha'Allah, I will be able to help guide these youngsters that are on the streets. No matter how it's going to happen, what miracle Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will manifest in my hands, I want to become a revolutionary, to tell you the truth. This is, this is between me and those of you that are listening right now. I have hope that one day, all of this violence that we have on the streets, whether it's political, I mean, there, there's so much that's involved, unfortunately, even in these, you know, amongst these gangs and amongst these people. I just want to bring about such a change, such a change. First, I need to change myself. Let me make, let me correct myself. And then after that, nevertheless, I'm currently with family. Inshallah, I will message you a few ideas by tomorrow. We're talking about it now, but inshallah, tomorrow is good. Connection with mosques are getting decreased. Okay, between, oh, I won't be able to tune in. However, what we, community, public school system, teachers and parents are guilty of is our definition of success. Get a good education, get a good job, make money, and be able to buy things you want. Most of these kids that have gone down what we call the wrong path are still reaching what we have defined as success. 
they just take a different route. So they don't choose to get an education. They don't choose to get a good job. They don't choose to make money a halal income for themselves because ultimately what I understand from, this is a teacher in the TDSB, what I understand from what he's trying to say is why go through all of that hardship and difficulty, four years of high school, four years of post-secondary, and then when I can just be making easy money with something else. And we know, we know making money like that is going to bring about big problems. That's not the money that seeks, that draws the attention, the help, or the, 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 the pleasure of Allah. That is only money, that income is only one, which unfortunately incurs the wrath of Allah. And yes, you're going to have people pulling triggers. And yes, we're going to hear about the lives of 19 and 18 year olds being taken over something that, you know, it's sad, it's sad. Most of these kids that have gone down what we call the wrong path, they're still reaching what we have defined as success. They just take a different route. We need to get back to focusing on the path they take, redefine what success is, and what our communities think success is. Refocus our youth back to the akhirah and ultimate success. Need to meet them. We need to talk to them. We need to be worried and concerned about them and slowly pull them away from what society deems successful to what Allah Ta'ala defines as success. Speaking of this last paragraph that I've read now, I've already made an appointment tomorrow, which is Sunday. Yes, tomorrow I have made an appointment with another brother, very worried and concerned about the youth of his region, though he doesn't belong to that area where this unfortunately rival, this rift, this problem that exists regarding certain people or certain... He, he's not from the area himself. I am not from that area myself. We have already decided to meet up with an individual who is very close to some of these individuals who unfortunately, whose names we've seen on CP24 in the last little while or so. Between... So, one of the... Okay, he says... Okay, so I don't think I can mention that. The problem is, another, bro another brother from another community, the problem is that youth are always looking for so-called hustles along the same lines, lines as the, as the, as the, as the uh, teacher just said, to make easy money. And they become trapped by older people they either know or related to that are affiliated with these gangs. And once they're in it, it's not as easy to simply just walk out. Like I said earlier, even they who are in it are struggling. This is what I meant. Not as easy to simply just walk out. Most people who try to leave are walking targets by being affiliated with certain gangs. Wow. Oh, another brother said, I'm at a wedding. Enjoy. Jazakallahu khayran for the opportunity. May Allah reward you as well. We're looking for answers, not opportunities. Opportunities to seek answers. Many people discussing about ideas, but our community is not implementing the ideas, said another brother. Many discuss a bit about or maybe, I guess, maybe discuss a bit about how to implement it and ways to do it. From going back to the teacher, okay, but going back to what the teacher said, he said that what we needed to do is meet them in person. We needed to meet them and talk to them and make worry and concern for them and slowly pull them away from what society deems successful all right, one of the brothers south of the border coming from the U.S. says, at least for my youth age, for those youth of his age, number one, managing relationship with parents. And I personally, I will come back to this right now. I'm going to add to this what another brother has just messaged me as well. Number one is parent support. And I am perhaps probably, of course, after our disconnection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I am of the opinion that number one, though I don't blame anybody, I don't point fingers at anybody, but number one comes from the parents. Number two, disconnection with the family, whether it's the mother, the father, okay, so the parents, and then we have siblings, disconnection with the siblings, and number three, we're talking about the opposite gender, which has become a humongous, humongous problem.
which has become a humongous problem, but perhaps we'll discuss that on another day. But as for now, we need to focus on these issues. One of the biggest problems is that the parents don't give them too much importance. Now, when I read about this, I read a very great deal about crime, guns, gangs, violence, taking place somewhere in Canada. I won't mention the city, there's no need, but this is something that is rampant, it's wild, it's happening everywhere. When I read a good deal about it, earlier today, before I took a little run in the woods, in the, in the park, when I read about it, the point I was going to make, oh, the point that I wanted to make is that, oh, parents, 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 mm. subhanAllah, just slipped my mind. Wow. Anyhow, so this is something for which we will have to find a comprehensive solution where everyone, every single one of these, every single one of these, I mean, well, the think tanks from each one of these, be it the government, be it the police officers, be it any other, uh, be it the communities, the different organizations, be it the churches for them and the masajid for us, be it the families, but come the parents. I wanted to make a very important point about the parents. Yes, many of these kids now, when I read about this, when I read about, you know, kids getting involved in gangs and getting involved in guns and getting involved in, you know, unfortunately, the drug market or the, the, the drug dealing and the trafficking and sometimes it becomes big and I hate to say it, it becomes worse with prostitution and so on and so forth. This actually begins when the child him or herself don't come from a, a, a closely knit family or sometimes when the family that the child comes from is a broken one. But where this makes me really boggle my mind is that many of these kids that we have on our streets from our communities, their mothers and fathers are amazing people. They are closely knit families. They are families that are still together, still connected. But so this doesn't sometimes, not sometimes, many a times, this doesn't apply to us. Now, please give me suggestions or I want you to tackle, to debate what I'm saying. Perhaps I could be wrong. Perhaps this isn't the right thing I'm saying. I want somebody to tell me. One brother said for sure. Parents should begin to realize having a lot of time for kids is very important. We've given, uh, namely the fathers. And that's, in my house at least, it's the father figure that every single child, we're eight kids from all of us, the siblings, we always feared the father more than, go ahead Abbas, we always feared our father more than we feared our mothers. So the fathers, rather than dedicating all their time to trying to make two ends meet, which is Allah's responsibility, Allah has taken it upon Himself to take care of Him, the father, the mother, and the children in terms of sustenance, rizq, food. Rather than focusing on that and working two jobs in the graveyard shift and this shift and another shift and give time to our ch And this starts at a young age. For some of us, for some of us, it's probably, I know, I, I hate to say this, and it's, I, I'm not trying to be despondent, and I'm not being pessimistic because this is not the way of the believer. But it is a little late. I am going to be very frank. It is a little late for some of us, for a lot of us. We were supposed to have bonded and made that connection, that relationship, that, 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 that psycho, that psych, psychological connection with our kids from a very young age. And we were supposed to keep them in check. But we didn't bother. And we thought the Mulisab, the teacher at the maktab, the one and a half hour, <coughs> the one and a half hour evening classes, three, four, maybe five times a week, we thought that he was going to do everything for the child, not worried the least that this child was involved with women or, or boys well, for the girls. He was involved or she was involved in drugs. He or she was involved with like ludicrous, mind boggling problems or issues or we didn't even care. We knew, we thought that he was coming to evening class for one, one and a half hour every night. He's fine. There's nothing to worry about. This, this is my understanding. And I'm still taking, still listening to what people have to say. Mostly this fall back to parents to have consistent, a continuous discussion with their kids from early age. Let me tell you how many, how many people 
have asked me to speak to their children. Why did it become awkward for the mom or the dad to be able to address that child in the first place? Oh, again, I could be wrong. I've got kids that are very small, but I talk about them. I mean, yesterday I was talking to my daughter and my father was there too. And he said, this is how you talk to them. He said, oh, you, you know how to talk to them. I, I took it as a compliment. Yeah, I may, I may have looked like a child for a few minutes or every day when I talk to them for, for, for how long I talk to them. It might make me look a little childish, but once they grow, I mean, this is my understanding. Let me know if I'm saying the right thing, if you have any other suggestions, ideas. Whoa. The situation we are in is very unfortunate and innocent. Innocent kids are being put in the middle of the fire. Yes, we need to focus on bringing back the youth that are currently involved in the game, but I believe a lot more attention needs to be put on the younger generation coming up. I've seen years and years of generations going through the same issues. And he's talking about people that start at, I mean, probably 40 now. So he's from my community. This brother who's coming, I'm, I'm reading, he's from our community. He's seen, perhaps, I mean, he's much younger than I am. I've seen those before us. I was never involved, but I have seen, of course, I mean, we went to school. We, we were friends with a lot of these brothers, mashallah. So we've seen those that are much older than us. And now we see the 15-year-olds. So if you go from 50 to, uh, sorry, 45 to 50, you're talking about three, three decades. So he's definitely seen this stuff. I've seen years and years of generations being put through the same issues because simply put it, to simply put it, the torch was passed on. And unfortunately, no effective way of stopping the cycle has been determined. And that's why we're going to continue talking about this. This is only the intro. This is the prelude. This is not the end all of everything. No! This is the beginning, inshallah, of this discussion. And it's time we become proactive. Not that somebody else need to get shot up again and that we're going to start talking about this. No, 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 no. We've been attending these programs. Myself, the president was there with me of this organization, may Allah reward him. And one of the, like, one of the top members in the, in the, I don't know what hierarchy works here, but a, a brother who's part of the board of this organization. The three of us were there. We were present. And there was Chief Saunders was there. There was this doctor and this therapist and this person. I mean, there was a ton of people there to try to address and tackle the same issues. We're going to keep going. In addition, when we look at what the youth face, it is so much more challenging now in which haram, unfortunately, is just to swipe away and, is, and sin is thrown at them. These kids today that frequent the masajid are walis. If you ask me, similar to, to what I would say what this, this teacher is saying, if you pray five times a day, I think it's next to impossible to even dream, think, entertain the thought of being on the streets. So those that are coming to the masjid, I salute those youngsters. And I see them. I saw them from Maghrib. I'll see them. I saw them for Asr. They'll probably be here for Isha as well. To be honest, I mean, may Allah keep them on the straight path. They've got amazing guidance coming to them from their teachers, from their teachers, from their... We, you know, what about the ones that, that we don't have coming to the masjid? Parents have a hard time even comprehending what's out there. They don't even know. The parents don't know, unfortunately. They have no... Yo, my, my, my son is a hafiz. He, mashallah, he memorized the Quran in two years and this masjid and that masjid and mashallah. The kid smokes dope for lunch, breakfast and dinner. Oh, mashallah, my kid, he goes, mashallah, he does this, he does... Do you know anything that's going on in your kid's life? Have you ever once bothered to check out what issues this child of yours is facing? what he's involved in, who he's affiliated with, what circle of friends he's made for himself. No, my son is doing it. And they take offense to it. Wow, they get offended. I mean, I know your kid smokes dope like there's no tomorrow and you're going to get offended. I don't address them, but yes, we need to find ways for our youth to be able to do the sunnah. Wow, this brother's on a different level. So what happened in Thorcliffe with the 16-year-old, I would say is because of no family support, money issues. Mm. Now we're talking a little more deep. Staying on the haq. Mm. Another brother from west of Canada. This might not be as specific to the topic, but prevention is by far the easiest and best solution. Unfortunately, we lack real men in our youth's lives to lead them by example. Or they... They aren't around enough to provide guidance to the infinite energy that develops in adolescence. It's in all youth to pursue success. 
That means originate based on whether the seed of responsibility was planted in them by real men in their lives. You know, he's got real men. <clears throat> it's in bold letters. And this is my dream. I want to be amongst those real men, like Muhammad Hoblos from Australia would say, amongst the Rijal. I want to be amongst those Rijal that change my life and help change the lives of like thousands of these youth. For a sense of responsibility will guide the rest of their life to come, whether spiritual or physical. Coming, oh wow, we've got some amazing suggestions. I'm going to wrap it up here though. Like to remain, okay. Right now, all parents who live in homes, first off, they need to put cameras outside. So when things do go down, police can find these people faster. Recent youth murders, nobody caught. Why? Police rather let them kill each other. Less work for them. <clears throat> parents turn their kids in. In case nobody knows where I'm taking these uh, suggestions, it's my personal WhatsApp number. If you don't know what it is, I'll just tell you what it is, it's not a problem. But you can also pass these messages on to the WhatsApp group for the organization, the Abu Bakr Masjid WhatsApp group, and then they'll share it with me right now. But there's too many here. If you, if, if, if you don't mind, we're going to keep these for the next discussion as well. And keep them coming throughout the whole week. I'm not no therapist. I'm not, I wish I can change even the life of one individual. I think, I mean, this is a great accomplishment. We're going to stop here after I read this last brother's um, suggestions, opinions, worries, concerns for the plight of the youth. But we will continue this discussion come next Saturday. So feel free to share your discussions and we're going to discuss them. We're going to talk about them. And soon we're going to have, inshallah, the live chat available. So as I'm talking and as you're giving me opinions, we'll make it, we'll make it more fruitful. So you'll be able to talk to me and I'll be able to talk to you and we can share with one another make this more comprehensive I mean on my list of contacts I've had ulama scholars I've had brothers that have mashallah I mean with no offense to them that you don't know who they are they've been there and done that I have teachers on this list so great this is amazing parents so <clears throat> less work for them parents they turn their kids in Community members should either snitch all the kids they know involved or at least call the cops every so often, especially during summer hot days just for police presence and safety in the neighborhoods. It's not parents' fault. Nothing they can do. This is not Indra or I guess maybe a country. You can't beat them. You can't send them to another country. Only thing you can do is talk to them or send them to rehab and that doesn't work for everyone. And last but not least, do gush. There we go, baby. Tabligh for life. These, these people will. Mm, gang, mm, innocent kid got shot recently. It could be my kid tomorrow or your kid tomorrow. Everyone has to share the responsibilities. Oh, this just goes on. I really appreciate everybody. Uh, Everybody tuning in and everybody giving, uh, giving us these suggestions. Again, this is only the beginning. But with what I've seen on such a very short notice, there was no poster. It was just me sending out a few messages very quickly. And then I got the, the WhatsApp group, group, mashallah, they did their homework. But we will continue this discussion, inshallah, next Saturday. So once again, let your friends know. And, I, you know, I don't like using these terms. But those that are in the game, let them know as well, inshallah, and that we can continue to talk the same.